We're opening up the mailbag again. Questions about Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum's leap, and my clone? It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. I got you every day with a free, fresh podcast, and I feel like I'm podcasting every day this month. There might be like three days this this month that I'm not going to have a podcast for you. That's how often, because I'm podcasting every Monday through Friday, plus bonus post-game pods. They play Friday night, they play Saturday night. I got you, so make sure you're subscribed Wherever you get your podcasts, watch the show on YouTube, hop in the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now my job is covering the Boston Celtics for Boston Sports Journal and for you because every Monday, I'm just going to keep trying to roll with this, this Monday uh, mailbag availability. Like It's it's a staple of the offseason, but the way the season's going, people keep flooding the, the mailbag with questions, so let's just keep it going. If you want to submit a question, it's at johncorrales.com slash mailbag. And today, later on, like a lot of fun ones. People are really like going nuts on the uh on the on the goofy questions. So hey, fine, we'll do that. That's all in the third segment. Asking about how many all-stars can the Celtics really get? Jason Tatum's leap, a shout out to ownership. Let's start with a question about Marcus Smart. Uh, and people are saying, like Edison here uh i see people feeling bad about smart not being here and losing in memphis i'd like to recommend to those people that they look at the porzingis three-pointer from the logo and just get over it we got way better with him and drew significantly better than smart and rob i'm afraid and look i i guess what i gotta say edison is it can be both it can be both you're right you are right but also i i can be sad I can be sad because I watched, I specifically went in Washington. uh, It was Wizards and Grizzlies, uh, the game before they played the Celtics. And I said, let me go check out on this like Celtics reunion bowl, smart, Gallinari, (laughs) Muscala. Let's go see this. And God, the, the Grizzlies look bad and Marcus looked frustrated. And I was just like, wow, that this cannot be feeling good for him. At the same time, Edison, I can absolutely agree with you that, yeah, that Porzingis three-pointer, hell yeah, that was that's that's a wrinkle that didn't exist before. How about Drew Holiday and all the stuff that he's been doing? That's something that didn't exist before. Drew Holiday is better than Marcus Smart, and the trade wasn't smart for Holiday. If that if that was the trade, I wouldn't have reacted the way I did. But In reality, even though they were traded in separate deals, the net effect is Porzingis, Rob became Porzingis, Smart became Holiday. And if you look at it like that, I can say, well, I I, I love Rob and I still think Rob can do a lot of things and, and can be part of a winning team. But man, that Porzingis fit offensively, whew, that's that's something. And then the smart upgrade to holiday. Like, I'm sorry. Like I, again, I'm a big, I'm probably the biggest proponent for Marcus smart in this market. And I'm not stupid though. I can look at it and say holidays making a lot of the same defensive plays and he's a better offensive player. So it is what it is. I can, I can miss smart and still be, uh, you know, acknowledging that, this is the team is better. They're obviously better. And Franklin to keep with this theme says with how bad the Grizzlies are this season, what are the odds we could reclaim Marcus smart? If the Grizzlies devalue him, that's I think the odds are zero. First of all, I think the odds of the Grizzlies devaluing him 
and moving him are are low. But if they do decide to pivot, if things just go really, really south, uh, there are rules against the Celtics reacquiring Marcus Smart. There's a certain amount of time. Uh, he would have to go through another team. It, it, it would be, it would be uh, first of all, number one, it would be difficult. Number two, it wouldn't make any sense because you're not bringing Marcus Smart back to be in this situation. Because if he came back, he would just want to slide back into the role that he had. And it's like, well, we've moved on. And I don't think there's room for you in the same way. You want to come off the bench? Like, because the chemistry and the roles, like I am a huge, huge believer in the team building its chemistry from the beginning and they've worked. And if let's just say, let's pretend at the trade deadline, some weirdness happens and Marcus smart finds a way to get back into Boston. Then yeah, half the locker room is going to be like, Oh wow. Marcus is back. This is amazing. And like a bunch of guys are going to be like, yeah, but he's going to come in and want to be the starting point guard again and want to be like he want and want to be like right back to who he was and and that messes with the holiday role it messes with the the Derek White role it messes with a lot of things i i just i don't want to mess with that the Celtics have a special thing here for me for me to say this is not the time to bring Marcus Smart back that should tell you something because like i said i'm Mr. Marcus Smart around here James from Hartford would just like for John to please give a huge shout out to Wick and Celtics management for putting this team together. It makes life so fun. Okay. Shout out Wick Grosbeck and Celtics management for putting this team together. Uh, after the, after the season start, ended, Wick Grosbeck relayed the story about sitting in a meeting with Joe Missoula and I think it was with Joe Missoula and and uh, Brad Stevens and and basically saying we can't bring back the same team. From there, you assume like okay, if the owner says, well, we can't bring back the same team, I assume the discussion then becomes okay. Here's our list of guys that we are willing to trade. Here's our list of guys that may not fit the way we thought they would. Here's our list of guys that are not exactly working within the framework of Joe Missoula's system. I mean, you look obviously at Grant Williams. They let him go for nothing. He was obviously, that's somebody, you don't just let him go for nothing, right? Financially motivated for sure. But if he was that valuable, they would have found a way. So they sat together and this is the result. The ownership said, things got to change. They all got together and decided how they were going to change it. They scanned the landscape. Brad Stevens said, hey, we can get Kristaps Porzingis. And they said, all right, who can we give up? They went with Malcolm Brogdon first, but they quickly pivoted to Marcus Smart. If you, if you pivot that quickly to Marcus Smart, that means they were willing to trade him from the beginning. That's not somebody that's like, it's a tough decision and all that stuff for sure. But you don't pivot from Marcus Smart, from, from Brogdon to Smart that quickly without it being like, we're willing to do that. You know that going in. So the Celtics had their plan. They executed it. And shout out to ownership and Celtics management. They had the guts to do things I would never have done. I would never, ever, ever have done this. But I would also be a terrible general manager. I know that. I'm not good at that. I'm better at, like, analyzing things after the fact. That's my strength. I can see what happened and tell you why it happened. The other stuff, let Brad Stevens do that. Let Wick Grosbeck handle that. Let Joe Mazzula handle that. So, up next, Jason Tatum. He is hot. Has he finally become Kobe Bryant? Hmm. Talk about that. My take on Peyton Pritchard. That's all coming up next. Uh, 
Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. The Game Time app is going to get you those killer deals on last minute tickets, no matter what it is a game, a concert, a show, a comedy show, whatever it is, you want that Game Time app. They've got all in prices. So when you see a price on the Game Time app, that's what you pay. You're not going to be surprised when you check out. You're also not going to be surprised when you get to the arena because they have views from your seat as you're looking at it so you know exactly what you're getting into. And their best price guarantee takes the guesswork out of buying tickets because if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So they've got these deals right up until the event, sometimes an hour after the event starts. Those comedy shows with like 20 openers, that's a great time to use the Game Time app. Let me tell you something. That's perfect. Download the Game Time app right now. Create an account. Use the code LOCKDOWNNBA. You will get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked on NBA, locked L O C K E D on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Check out Locked On NBA. I'm there on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. This will be a fun week for us because there's no games to talk about on uh, the Wednesday show. Tuesday's Election Day, so we're gonna have a lot of fun there. We're gonna make up some really great stuff. I promise you, but check out the lockdown NBA podcast because uh, we got rotating hosts all week. It's a, it's a good time. It's a good time on the lockdown NBA podcast. Chris, as we dive back into the mailbag again, John Corrales.com slash mailbag. If you want to get your questions in, Chris says, uh, in the off season, you took a whole episode to talk about Tatum highlighting a few key areas for growth. I think it might be funny if you did a periodic Jason Tatum heat check where you revisit those key areas and give your thoughts on how he's progressing. Well, Chris, first of all, thank you for being a daily listener. Uh, I will also, uh, I will say that I don't think I need to do that. Uh, I, I appreciate the idea and I get exactly where you're coming from on that idea, but I think the post game shows and the in between shows are going to give a lot of opportunity for me to kind of do this organically uh, because he's having such a great year. I think, I think we're just going to have a lot of discussion about Jason Tatum and the leap that he's making, because this is a leap. He is taking a step forward. I believe now it's only five games. I get it. However, the, the way he's scoring, what he's able to do, how he's doing it. It's always the how it's not the result. It's not that he's averaging 30. He averaged 30 last year. He's doing it differently. He's definitely just doing it differently. And the how is what matters to me. And so let's fold in Phillips question where he says, did Tatum finally become Kobe? His recent physicality growth as a playmaker, attention on defense, his endless bag. I can't help think of Kobe, uh, different personalities, but I see two black belt students from the Mamba dojo. Uh, okay. I see where you're going with this. I don't think he's become Kobe in that in the beginning of his career, he was a Kobe clone. He was trying to be Kobe Bryant. That's his hero. I think now Jason Tatum has finally grown into Jason Tatum. This is Jason Tatum's style of basketball. And by becoming Jason Tatum, yes, he does kind of sort of become Kobe in that he's starting to become that number one kind of killer mentality. I can do this. I can set you up. I know what I'm trying to do. You don't, but I know, and I'm thinking two, three steps ahead. Yeah, there's a little bit of that kind of Kobe. And by Kobe, we can also say, all of the greats, right? This is the type of, he's he's trying to take that step into Hall of Famer and all-time great. And that kind of leader, that kind of scorer, that kind of player overall, you can, you can give me any great name, any great wing. 
Tatum's progression is incredible. And I've I've said a long time that he's he's different than the Luka Doncic's of the world. I always compare him to Luka. And Luka's the type of guy who can come in, and not this season, came in in shape, but Luka's the type of guy who can come in after, you know, slugging beers all summer and being a little paunchy and being like, oh, yeah, I got to get back into shape. And everybody's like, what? What? He does not look good. And he can still come in and drop like 30 and 12 in a game. You're like, jeez, it's, it's incredible. Tatum is like the polished professional assassin. Uh, but this year he's, he's operating at an even higher level. So you want to say that he finally has become Kobe? Sure. Actually, sure. But as long as it's not style of play, I know it's not style of play. It's the way he's approaching the game and and the job that he's doing. So lots of Tatum and there's going to be lots of Tatum. This, this podcast is going to be very heavily Jason Tatum moving forward because he is very clearly taking a step, a big step forward. This is no longer, and I said this on yesterday's bonus podcast, I don't think we're going to be having much of the discussion, and this is no knock on Jalen Brown because Jalen is still just as good as he's always been. But I think we're seeing the separation where last year, the year before, we would say, oh, you know, Jalen's kind of starting the season pretty hot. He's he's playing better than Tatum. I think I think we're past that now. I think Tatum is starting to separate himself. Delon says, uh, "How are you so quick to give up on Pritchard? Look at what he did against the Pacers." Uh, okay, I am not giving up on Pritchard. I like Peyton Pritchard. Let me just clarify on all of this. I like Peyton Pritchard. I think Peyton Pritchard is a good basketball player. I think his energy is great. I think he's important. I think he's going to help the Celtics win games. There are going to be games where he actually is the reason why Boston wins. Okay, let's get that out of the out, out there right now. I also don't think that he's going to be much of a playoff performer uh, or as big a player performer as some people think. I am trying to be realistic. When people say, Oh, that preseason, he's going to be six man of the year. Peyton Pritch is going to be like, okay, okay, okay. I'm not giving up on him by saying that, but I'm just pulling people. I'm pulling the reins back, man. Let's just hold up. Let's hold up for a second. Okay. He's good, but he's not, not going to get that big of an opportunity to put up those kind of numbers. He's not going to get the usage that he got in the preseason. He's not going to get a lot of that same stuff. If he played for, I don't know, the Wizards maybe, he'd probably go out there and have a pretty good time and score a bunch and play and and earn some contracts. And maybe that's what he needs. Maybe he just needs to be like, if he wins in Boston and then after a while it's just kind of like, all right, moving on, maybe he just needs to go to like be a featured player on a bad team and go rack up some points and maybe earn some contracts that way. He's capable of doing it. He's certainly capable of doing it. He's good. He's good. Okay. But there are limitations to his game. I'm sorry. There are just limitations to his game when, especially when it comes to the playoffs and yeah, he's going to have some games. He's going to have a game like he did against Indy. He's going to have that again, somewhere down the road. He's also going to get like, completely shut down against some bigger teams and people are going to be like, Oh, why is he even on the team? There are, there are people who are like in my mentions and in my mailbag saying, when do we get rid of Pritchard? So I'm not going that far either, but let's not say I'm giving up on Pritchard. He's good. It's just the limitations are what they are. How many all-stars can the Celtics get? Ooh, Hmm. Let's count those up. Plus lots of fun questions. The NBA belt, uh, questions about Tom questions about me questions about friendship, my clone. It's all coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel score big, this NFL, this NBA season with FanDuel America's number one sports book. If you haven't joined FanDuel yet, Now is the time because new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. 
That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So the Celtics are four point favorites in Minnesota here on Monday night. Why not lay five bucks down on that four point spread and see if you can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed if your team wins. So this is the time. And look, the, the FanDuel app is a great app where it's very easy to explore and, and you can do all sorts of things. The simple bets, the parlays, you can, you can pile up parlays in the same game. You can go Tatum points and Al Horford three pointers and Jalen Brown assists and, and you can pile them up and who knows, uh, maybe you come up with a big payout. Super easy to use. FanDuel.com slash locked on is where to go to get started. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. And I'll tell you this, the best part about it is the tools that can help you gamble responsibly, set your limits. They can help you do it. Just ask you, yes, if you're going to do it, gamble responsibly. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcast because I will be podcasting basically every day for the rest of the month. You want to know when I'm going to stop podcasting for the rest of this month? There's going to be two days, Saturday the 18th and Saturday the 25th. I am podcasting every day between now and the end of the month, except for those two. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know. Give me your opinions. All right. The rest of this section is all about like fun. I'm going to try to rapid fire my way through this so I can finish on time. Let's try to get through this all. All right. Ready? Kevin says, I know I'm getting way ahead of myself, but is it possible we can get five all-stars? Does the league even allow that? If not, who gets left off? So no, you're not going to get five all-stars. It's just not going to get that level of production. You're going to get Tatum. You're going to get Brown. That's two. You'll probably get a third from either. I'm going to say it's going to be Porzingis, uh, especially because of the bigs. So I, I'm going to say Porzingis will be the third one. Uh, if for some reason the Celtics find their way to a fourth, it'll be between uh, Derek White and Drew Holiday. But I don't think they get there. But it's – if. There is a way to do it. I mean, but all five guys have to be mega stars. Like they all have to be huge, 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 huge. It's not possible. It's not 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 practical. I should say it's not practically possible. So I would expect three at the most. Two for sure. Three at the most. Jarrett, I love these. Uh, if so. I doubt there would be anything official, but I would love to see some network do title belt night broadcasts that follow the belt. If you don't know what the NBA belt is, it's something that I've become sort of like the caretaker of. It's not my original idea, but I'm I'm following it now. The champs come into the season. They have this mythical NBA belt. Every night is a title defense. Whenever they lose, it goes to the next, the team that beats them. So Denver 4-0, then they face Minnesota. They lost to Minnesota. The Timberwolves now have it. They beat Utah, and now it's Minnesota versus Boston Monday night. Title belt, NBA title belt. So let's, yeah, I want to see the broadcast, like, pump this up. NBA title, let's do it. Okay, uh, beyond the in-season tournament, what else could the NBA try? Jared wants to know what else. Okay, if they're not going to do the belt, which they should, come on, that's an easy one. Okay, the in-season tournament, what else can the NBA try to make the regular season uh, more interesting? It's I think we're at gimmicks. It's uh, if, if we're looking at um, – look, I'm a big proponent of the Elam ending. I think once you get to a certain point with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, you stop the game or at that last TV timeout at the three-minute mark in the, in the fourth quarter, you stop the game, you say, okay, the next – I don't know, 12 points from here, uh, from the, the, the closest score. So if the Celtics were up a hundred to 75 first team to one twelve wins the game. And then the game could be over in the next, you know, minute and a half, depending on if the Celtics whip off a 12 0 run, that type of stuff. I'm, I'm all for the Elam ending. I like it. Okay. So no, let's make seating important. 
let's get the, the top seeds to pick their opponents. So the top three seeds get to, or top two seeds get to pick their opponent. That adds some value to the regular season. Uh, what about a regular season cup where the it's it's the winner of the regular season gets some sort of playoff reward? What if the winner, the regular season, the best record in the regular season goes up into their series already up one nothing, and it's still a, a series that you you still get the next two home games. So you're already up one nothing. You can go up three nothing right away. Boom, boom, boom. Win your two home games, you're up three nothing. And then you win. Let's give them some incentive. I don't know. I'm just coming up with something. A, a tournament. How about the bad teams play a tournament for draft picks? Right? You can find a way to pump up the regular season a little bit that way. But I don't think any of that stuff is even close. They're going to do the in-season tournament in reality. That's their that's their bet. If that doesn't work, NBA belt sitting right there, baby. Huey says, any reason why Tom Westerholm doesn't hop on the podcast with the other Jays? Do they hate each other? Oh, vicious, vicious enemies. Tom and the Jays. Oh, so vicious enemies. They, oh, so no, they don't like, they don't hate each other at all. He doesn't hop on their podcast because he's doing my podcast. That's, this is, this is it. That's, that's, that's what it is. He's, he's here for a couple days a week, two, three, whatever days I need him. And then that's that's it. I mean, if he wanted to, if they asked him, I'm sure he he would. He could. He's not. There's nothing stopping him. You know, I, I don't have him tied to a radiator. Ooh, maybe I should tie him to the. Mental note: I'll revisit that. We'll get on to the next one. Ryan says, "Are you friends with Taylor Snow and other Celtics writers?" I mean, friends. I mean, they're we're not hanging out. We're not going to a bar or anything like that. But like, if we're on the road. And they said, hey, we're going out for drinks. Like, I'm friendly with all those guys. Absolutely. You have to understand, at 50 years old, I'm not exactly in everybody's wheelhouse of, you know, of friends. I'm I'm probably, like, past the expiration date of most friends that they have. I'm, I mean, I am wildly immature, so I can be a good time. Uh, I don't mind going to a bar and having some fun. That's not an issue. So yeah, I'm fun to be around. These guys are fun to be around. I like Taylor. See, you you mentioned Taylor specifically. Taylor's a good guy. The, the honestly, the beat is full of really good guys. Like every single one of them. Um, I'm not like calling, texting all of them and be like, "Hey, so what'd you do today?" That's not the level of friendship. But we've hung out. Like a bunch of us have hung out. Random people on the road. We'll get dinner together. You know, different groups of us will get dinner together. So it's, it's a good group. It's legitimately a good group of guys. Uh, I I'm lucky because I get to be surrounded by those guys. So, um, it's, it's a good beat. Bailey. Hey, John, do you start to recognize consistent viewers slash commenters or Twitter followers as you go? Do you start to have daily listeners and commenters as you view right you view as regulars? Yes, I do. Uh, it's funny. On Twitter, it cycles through. So I had when I first joined in 2010 or so, whatever it was, you get your first group of like regulars, and then they start to fall off. And then there's a new wave of regulars, and they start to fall off, and then another wave of regulars, and every couple years or so there's just a new wave of people it's almost like a graduating class you get a few years with a group and they said okay that's it thank you and they all just kind of realize twitter generally sucks and they leave but i kind of have to stay on it so it's just the next group of people so that that's kind of how it works uh on the youtube page it's still somewhat new to me it's been a couple years uh, that I've been on YouTube. I don't know exactly how long it's been, but it, it's been like probably a couple of years actually. So, uh, there are, there is a group of people. There's a group that as soon as I post, they're subscribed. So they get the notification, boom, they comment right away. Uh, I love that. I make sure I like all of those comments. That's awesome. Like I love that kind of crew. Uh, I, I do recognize some of the people who are regularly, uh, in there, especially if they've got like, if you've got an avatar and an actual username, I will recognize that. So 
Yes, there are regulars. I do recognize you if you're around. For sure, I recognize the people who are there consistently. So thank you so much for everybody for being consistent. Hank says, regardless of where you live and have grown up, what are your favorite cities to visit? And which ones do you believe you'd want to live in? So I've, I've obviously been vocal about New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I could live in New Orleans for sure. Uh, I like New York. I, I have lived in New York for a while. Uh, that was fun. I could do that again, but under different circumstances. I did that in my 30s and my mid 30s. And I had, you know, my, my, you know, I enjoyed New York as a guy in his 30s. Uh, but now as an older man in his fifties, I don't really want to go through a lot of the stuff that I went through. I'm not partying the way I, I did back then. So I would want my New York experience to be different, but I would absolutely, I would live there again. Uh, I was just in DC. DC is very much like Boston. Uh, I could live in DC for sure. Uh, the Georgetown area is very, very nice. So I, that, that's some, that's a place I could live. Um, I, where else would I go? Um, Chicago. I enjoy Chicago very, very much. I don't know if I'd live there. Winters can be a little, a little dicey, but Chicago is a city that I really do enjoy. And anytime I get to go out to Chicago, uh, for sure, like Chicago is a place I'll just go over the summer. It's a great place to just go for a long weekend. Uh, and the flights there are super easy. So that's that's a great place to go. Uh, big Vegas fan. Uh, you, I'll I'll be in Vegas a couple times a year for sure. So uh, it's it's I think big cities, big cities. I think you can tell big cities where things are happening. That's that's my 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 thing. You know, I like to have fun. So <laughs> New Orleans, New York, Vegas, Chicago. I'm picking all the big kind of party fun cities. I'm that's my that's my Jam, man. I'm, I'm a, I love being around people. I love the big cities. I love the action. And then my final message comes from John Corrales. What? John Corrales? I know that guy. The message says, hello, John. What would it mean to you to meet someone who shares the ex same exact name as you, as well as similar interests? A clone of you, if you will. Well, I already know a couple of other John Corrales's because in Greece, the tradition is the firstborn son is named after the grandfather. So my dad and his two brothers all named their firstborn sons, John. So there's two other John Corrales's in my family. So I know a couple of them. Uh, one of them is a big sports fan. He shares the basically the exact same interests and the exact same name. And he will text me from time to time and tell me that I'm living his dream. And he says uh, that he appreciates me making him look good because people think it's him. And I, so he's the first one. He's the oldest one. So he calls himself the original. And I keep telling him, well, yeah, but they just kept going until they got it right because I'm the youngest one of them all. So that's our little fun. But also there are other Corrales's. There, Corrales is not an uncommon name in Greece. There are plenty of John Corrales's out there. I'm sure there are John Corrales's uh, somewhere out there in the Midwest that have Googled their, their names and been like, who the hell is this guy? Um, somebody's probably gotten my mail. If there's any John Corrales out there that's a rich cousin, hit me up. Let's talk. Um, I am not going to be the rich cousin. Let me just tell you that up front. I do a podcast and I'm a journalist. I'm comfortable, but I'm not going to be able to give anybody any money. So nobody get any thoughts there. However, if somebody, John Corrales has hit the lottery and we have some, uh, you know, similar DNA somewhere, let's sit down, let's chat. I'll do some odd jobs for you. I, you know, will earn my money, but let's, you know, I could use a couple extra bucks. Plenty of Corrales out there. Shout out to all the Corrales's. Uh, there's a section of Italy that was named Corrales. It's in, um, it's on an Island, I believe. And also shout out to all the Latvian fans who are coming here for Kristaps Brzingis, who like to tell me that in Latvia, Corrales means King. So yeah, let's go. The real King 
of Boston Sports Media. If you're listening, that that sound was accompanied by two thumbs pointing in very a very d bag way towards myself. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for the mailbag submissions. Remember, johncorrales.com slash mailbag to submit your questions. Keep them coming in. I'll try to do the mailbags every Monday as much as I can. So I'll sprinkle the questions in if I can throughout the course of my podcasting. Like I said, I got a ton of podcasts this month. Podcast, like they're playing every weekend. So bonus podcasts like crazy. Subscribe. Make sure you get this show directly to your device on any podcasting app that you want. It's also on YouTube. Obviously, I would love to see you there on the YouTube page. Come join me there. That's where the comment section is. Hop in there. Let me know what you think. And I would love it if you shared the podcast. Spread the word. Let everybody know they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.